Jono, you there? Can you put the, the track? Let's see if it's played, please. Oh, sorry, it's my end, not you. Okay, guys, let's give it a try again. Two. Let's have a practice again. Okay, guys, let's try it. Everybody and welcome to another Mosaic Online. Can you believe it's been 30 weeks since we started meeting like this? And although we really miss you and we miss real life connection, we're so grateful for the next best thing. We are still together apart. One way we can stay connected is to encourage each other and we can do that today as we draw together like this to connect everyone with Jesus. Well, I want to read to you a passage from Hebrews that reminds us of this notion. It says this, and since we now have a magnificent king priest to welcome us into God's house, we come closer to God and approach him with an open heart, fully convinced by faith that nothing will keep us at a distance from him. For our hearts have been sprinkled with blood to remove impurity and we've been freed from an accusing conscience. And now we are clean, unstained and presentable to God inside and out. So now we must cling to the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promises. Discover creative ways to encourage others and to motivate them towards acts of compassion, doing beautiful works as expressions of love. This is not the time to pull away and neglect meeting together as some have formed the habit of doing, because we need each other. In fact, we should come together even more frequently, eager to encourage and to urge each other onwards as we anticipate that day dawning. So why are we talking about coming together when we physically can't? It's because the Bible tells us to find creative ways to connect. We can come together in heart and mind in song and voice, and in encouraging each other via as many digital means as possible. Let's worship God and encourage each other today.
of my heart be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide the ransom for my life oh he is my song you are good good of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song let the king of my heart Time my sails, the anchor in the waves. Oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins. The echo of my days. Oh, he is my song. You are good. You good. Never gonna let me down. You're never gonna let. You're never. 
that valley hill called Calvary But for the one I call Good Shepherd Who like a lamb was slain for me So I will praise you on the mountain And I will praise you when the mountains in my way That was amazing and it's just fantastic to have our team lead us into the presence of God. Now at 12 o'clock today, Mosaic Kids is back uh, on Facebook and YouTube for all children age four and upwards, but also for the child at heart in all of us. There's a great new song that they're learning, so hopefully you'll be able to sing and dance along with the kids team right after this service. Okay, so here's some really big news. Next Sunday, the 25th of October, we are excited to be moving forward with in-person gatherings. Yeah, you heard it. We'll be meeting every Sunday from 6pm at the Hope Centre. Online bookings will be, be available from the Sunday to the Thursday, the week prior to gathering. Um, but obviously with um, the government guidance that is ongoing, we are only able to welcome a small number of people. So you've got to sign up really fast. So book in now, book in today for you and your household. Um, how do you do that? Go over to mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash at six. All the details of what to expect are on the website, including the COVID secure guidelines. Um, unfortunately, there isn't any provision for young children, but of course they can still join in with our Mosaic Kids Online. So don't worry if you miss out, there'll be more tickets being released on the following Sunday, um, but we recommend you book in as fast as you can because they will go pretty quickly. Now, here is what is happening across the life of Mosaic. Hi, Hi everybody. everybody! We're going to say what we're 
enjoyed about Captivate this past weekend. What did you enjoy, Grace? I enjoyed the Sisters and Revival segment and I enjoyed the community spirit of it all. People messaging me and checking up on me. I thought it was really nice. You know, I was so apprehensive when um, I found out that we were going to be having the conference on an app. I literally thought, wow, this is the craziest thing. If we haven't had enough craziness in 2020 and living Zoom life in lockdown, I thought, how can we do this amazing conference and, you know, feel the love and passion from these amazing speakers through an app? I just didn't think that it was possible. And I am so glad that I was proved wrong. You know, the Hoover app, enabled us to interact, engage with people that probably at the conference we wouldn't even been able to do that with and really, um, you know, make some friendships. I'm looking forward to meeting some of you women that um, we spoke on the app. But um, no, it was absolutely fantastic. Hey guys, my favourite part of Captivate was getting to engage in the world and engage with all you beautiful ladies. And my, what a meeting it was. I was so blessed, I was so challenged, and wow, Pastor Dawn, she was amazing, um, just inspiring me and just reminding me that I have to agree with God's word and see the power that comes from just agreeing and coming into alignment with what God has said about me. Not to talk of Pastor Amanda Corner that spoke about planting our seeds. Um, it was an amazing meeting. I was so blessed to hear the amazing stories that has happened of people's relationships with God and how we just empower one another and a sense of togetherness, of standing together and wanting to jump in those waves because that's what it's all about. It's been a very turbulent time of year this year for me with losing my father to COVID, but what a blessing it is that even though my dad has passed, that the blessings are still coming and that I have the privilege to stand with other women knowing that I am never on my own, that they are championing me on and holding my hand up high on the days that I can't do it. It was some months ago when Helen asked me to lead the prayer team for Captivate. Leading my own team in ministry is not something I've ever done before. The journey over several months has taken me to new heights in my prayer life, an experience that has pro prophetically mirrored the eagle from Isaiah 40, 31. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. All this culminating in the conference itself where I had the privilege to pray for women and seeing the women who I had not even met before all praying for each other on the community pages. Thank you to Captivate because I now know the sky's the limit for where God wants to take us. Amen. Yeah, what did you enjoy, Mum? Oh, I just loved the whole thing. I loved everything. <laughs> it meant the world to me. I love it. I love women. I love ladies. I love girls. And just having us all together, connected from lots of different churches, listening to God's word and having fun together and being on Zoom together. Amazing. Love it. Amazing. Thank you. It's uh, not such a sunny afternoon, but I've just popped outside to see Mick because normally I'm inside and I just want to find out what do you actually do out here all day, Mick? Well, we get people come through to uh, pick up the food and stuff and I normally just go up to people and welcome them and say thank you for coming and uh, have a bit of a chat with them, find out a little bit about their story and then a lot of the time we end up praying but the real good thing about what's happening just lately is people now are asking us to pray with them and get the team involved in prayer for people which is really good so as as we've been here since march things have uh, developed haven't they in the fact that people are becoming more open to what we're doing and asking us questions which is great and how do you see it moving forward from now on Okay, um, well, because we have people come through all the time, the same people, uh, you get to follow their story through. So not only are we having time to sit at a table with 
put up for them and counsel them a little bit. Um, we're talking about putting a, a midweek uh, uh, time on for them called Friday Focus. So that's another progression. Yeah, that's wonderful, isn't it? So really today we're coming to um, ask the church to pray for us mm. uh, as we move forward with Friday Focus. Um, it's something that we can't do on our our own. We can we can facilitate Friday Focus, but we need your prayers behind us. Uh, we need God at the centre, and um, we'd like the church to pray for us as a whole church in order that this um, vision is carried on. Yes. Absolutely. So, thank you. Thank you. We have an amazing night planned for you outside for a bonfire night on the 23rd of October. You will need to register, but it's going to be great. And don't you worry, if it is raining, we have the best Friday night in planned inside. time in our service where we get to give as part of our worship. In the Bible, Paul says this is about giving to the church. Remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. Each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to bless you abundantly so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. This is such a clear Bible verse. Whatever the amount and measure of our financial giving, our motive should always be to give as God himself gives, sacrificially, cheerfully, generously and extravagantly. If you want to sow into the life of Mosaic today, you can do that by visiting our webpage, mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash give. And we are so grateful for the growing number of people who give every single week. Your generosity is changing lives. Well, now it's time to hear from Chris Spicer, who will be bringing us our word for today. Good morning. My goal for this morning is simple. I'd like to share with you a lesson that I learned in lockdown. The year 2020 has not been an easy year. For many of us, it's been full of challenges. For me personally, the added difficulty of being diagnosed with stage two prostate cancer has created an interesting year. And time doesn't allow me to share the full story of the goodness of God, the expertise of the medical profession and the brilliance of a wonderful nurse called Tina. But like a lot of men, I am not a good patient. I don't suffer well. And the miracle of lockdown is for us that we're still married. We're still talking to each other. God's goodness has been incredible. Following my surgery, I spent the first two weeks in a very difficult uh, time. And I would often lay awake at 3 a.m. in the morning and I would start singing songs of praise and uh, memorizing hymns and scriptures and, and being so very positive. That's not true. The reality is at 3 a.m. in the morning, when I'm feeling sorry for myself, I'm not praising, I'm moaning. I'm complaining of what's going on. In fact, I am experiencing what I've come to call my juniper tree moment. My juniper tree moment. If you know anything of the Old Testament and the story of the prophet Elijah in, in, in Kings 19, the 19th chapter of Kings, 1 Kings 19, you will know that he experiences this incredible spiritual high. And then following the spiritual high, he finds himself experiencing an emotional low. He becomes a, to such a, 
uh, his loneliness gets to such a degree that he finds himself sitting under a juniper tree asking God to take him. And while I'm lying there at 3 a.m. in the morning suffering, I'm experiencing my own juniper tree moment. I'm moaning. I'm creating my own pity party and I'm the only one attending. This was for me a difficult time. And lying there in my juniper tree moment, I start scanning through the internet and I start listening to Ravi Zacharias. If you're ever wanting to listen to something that will pick you up, listen to some Ravi. Ravi's good for you when you're under a juniper tree moment. And it's not so much what he said, it was the anointing that was upon his words. And subconsciously, this changed my mind. What had happened was I'd been prayerfully complaining to God, as if the omniscient, all-knowing God didn't know it and needed reminding. I'm saying things like, God, I'm really going through it. God, I'm really going through it. I'd like you to know, like you to recognize, like if you've forgotten, I'd like to remind you of that. This is what I'm going through. What I was doing was I was allowing my natural mind to state the facts. My natural mind was stating the facts. I was telling God the facts. I'm going medically, physically, emotionally, even spiritually. I'm really going through a tough time. Now, many of you who are listening to this talk are going through stuff far worse than what I was going through. And as you listen to this, I'd like that the lesson that God was trying to teach me might help you as you go through your difficult and challenging experience. If you were looking for a, a biblical analogy to what's happening in your life right now, you might say, I'm going through a valley. I'm going through a valley experience. Like Psalms 23, when we walk through the valley of the shadow, and sometimes our circumstances are dark, they're dreary. We feel down, emotionally down. A valley is a depression in the earth's surface. And a valley experience is when we are emotionally feeling down. And what you are going through right now, you might say, I would describe it as a valley. For some others who are listening to this talk, you might say, a valley doesn't do it. What I'm in is a river. Like Isaiah, he talks about when you go through the river and you are feeling right now totally overwhelmed with the circumstances in which you find yourself. In fact, you are feeling so overwhelmed, you almost feel as if you're going down for the last time and you're crying out, silently crying out deep within, God, help me. Will someone save me? I'm in a river and I'm feeling totally overwhelmed. Can I say at this point, there is such a thing as hyper grace. And hyper grace will tell us that the Christian life is all plain sailing. It's a picnic in the park. Well, let me tell you, Christianity, being a Christ follower, has some challenging moments. You and I will, at some point in our Christian life, suffer. We will suffer physically, emotionally, even spiritually. We will go through a valley. We will feel like we're in a river. We will feel as if things are difficult. And we need to get a clear theology about suffering. Because there is almost a sense of which I have to be happy every day. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And I have to have a smile, even though inside I am feeling as if I'm dying a death. I feel as if I'm drowning. For others, it's not a valley. It's not a river. For you right now, you are going through a wilderness. Your wilderness makes you feel spiritually divorced from civilization. You feel cut off. You feel as if you're going through a dry spiritual patch. You're in a wilderness. It's not a valley. It's not a river, but it's a wilderness. Can I say, as you read your Bible, you will find that some of God's saints had some great learning experience within the wilderness. They found 
that the wilderness was a place to learn faith lessons. So there I am. I'm lying in bed at 3 a.m. in the morning, feeling sorry for myself, moaning, complaining, and telling God, God, I'm really going through it. And I'm listening to Ravi Zacharias. And as I listen, there is a work of the Spirit that starts changing my mind. I was stating the facts and telling God what I was going through. I'm saying, God, I'm really going through it. And then there is a change of mind whereby I'm no longer just stating the facts. I'm starting to speak faith. I'm speaking faith. My natural man was stating facts. Now my spiritual man is speaking faith. It's okay to state the facts, but having stated the facts, we need to speak faith. God is going by his grace to take me through it. This is not my destination. This is just part of the journey. Yes, I'm going through it, but by God's grace, I'm going to go through it. It's like Abraham, and I love that portion in Romans where it says, he did not weaken in faith when he considered his body but grew strong in faith, he gave glory to God, fully convinced that God was able to do what he had promised. So there's a shift in my thinking, my natural mind stating the facts, but now my spiritual man is stating faith, speaking faith. And I'm saying to myself, by God's grace, I'm going to go through this situation. It's not of my choosing. It's not the path I wanted to take, but I'm going by God's goodness and by his grace to go through it. Can I say here, we tend to think of Christianity as a walk in the park. It's not. There is a cost involved in being a Christ follower. And as I said previously, we will emotionally, physically, and sometimes spiritually suffer in our lifetime. And we need to get a good grip on the biblical concept of suffering because there is a redemptive power in suffering. If nothing else, God can allow suffering to get our attention. He might want to bring us into a closer relationship with him. There is a redemptive power in suffering. We don't like it, but 2 Timothy 2.12 says, if we suffer, we shall reign with him. Acts 14.22, through much suffering, we enter into the kingdom of God and then try and grapple with Paul's prayer in Philippians where he prays that I might share in his suffering. We don't like it. We're not very good in it. But when we're going through a season of suffering, yes, our natural man will state the facts, but our spiritual mind, our spiritual man needs to speak faith. C.S. Lewis said, God whispers to us in our pleasure but shouts in our pain. God whispers to us in our pleasure, but shouts to us in our pain. Right now, your journey may be a valley. It may be a river. It may be a wilderness. You may feel as if this is not the way you planned. But let me say to you, this is not your destination. Don't stagnate. Don't stop any longer than you have to, but push through. By faith, push through this circumstance, keeping your eyes, push through the circumstances, keeping your eyes on Jesus. John 4, 4 says this, speaking of Jesus, and he had to pass through Samaria. Jesus had to pass through Samaria. For the Jews, they would do anything to not go through Samaria. In fact, there was another road that Jesus could have taken to avoid Samaria, but he knew that in God's will, there was someone at a well he was going to meet. There was someone whose life was going to be transformed because he was going to go through Samaria. And so he obeyed the Father's will. There was purpose in going through Samaria. And whatever you're going through, find the purpose within the situation and push through. And even if you don't find the purpose, put your faith in God and trust in, it, in him because there is a purpose in what you are going through. Be empowered by the grace of God. Although we don't want them and, some, and we don't cause them, 
Sometimes we have to go through unpleasant times, but we don't stop. We don't linger. We, by faith, push through the circumstances. Listen, the nature of our circumstances does not change the character of God. The nature of our circumstances does not change the character of God. It's a lesson I learned in lockdown. And there I am lying at 3 a.m. in the morning, moaning and telling God, reminding him of the facts and saying, God, I'm really going through it. And then the Spirit of God begins to work on me. I'm listening, listening to the internet and the anointing that's coming through preachers. And there's a renewing of my mind. And instead of just stating the facts, I start speaking faith. And I remind myself of the goodness of God. Let me close by giving this illustration. I'm lying there, 3 a.m. in the morning, feeling sorry for myself, scanning through the internet. And I come across a song. You won't probably have heard of this, but it's a song that was written by Andre Crouch years ago. And I start listening to this song and I recognize it and I remember the lyrics. And I've asked Howard and Gemma if they will sing it as we close this morning. And as you listen to this song, you who are going through a valley, I'm speaking to you. You who are feeling totally overwhelmed by the river you're in. You who are going through a spiritual wilderness, I'm saying this to you. Yes, you can state the facts, but by God's grace, start speaking faith. This is not your destination. This is not a stopping off point. This is not where you should stagnate. You've got to push through and see the goodness of God in the midst of this, what you're going through. The lyrics read, through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Whatever you're going through this morning, whatever circumstances you're in, your circumstances do not change the character of God. God is still in control. He's still in charge. And no matter what you're going through, yes, speak the facts, but speak the faith of God. Amen. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. God gave me blessed consolation That my trials come to only make me strong
We do want to thank Chris for sharing his heart with us today and we're so thrilled to hear of his much improved health and we join him in celebrating the goodness of God. So don't miss out next Sunday as we start a new exciting teaching series based on the book of Acts. We'll be focusing on scenes from the book of Acts and how they inspire us to become a world changing community today. So every week we receive lots of prayer requests from across the city and beyond and we do pray as a team weekly for those that come through. If you've received an answer to prayer, we would love to hear from you. Don't forget to come over and visit us on mosaicchurch.co.uk forward slash prayer to leave a request or let us know about your answer to prayer. Well, we thank you so much for joining us over here on Mosaic Online today. We pray you have an incredible week. Reach out to someone, encourage them, love on someone in the community today. And we'll see you next time online.